Hello, good evening and welcome to St Martin's Broad Main for evening prayer on Wednesday the 12th of December using common worship order for Advent at the beginning of common worship daily prayer after prayer during the day morning and evening prayer the seasons and Advent and we'll be using the collect for the ember as it's an ember day collect for an ember day as we pray for ministry in general. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Reveal among us the light of your presence, that we may behold your power and glory. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of light and darkness. To you be glory and praise forever. As evening falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence. May your word be a lantern to our feet and a light upon our path, that we may behold your coming among us. Strengthen us in our stumbling weakness and free our tongues to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. And shall we read this creator of the stars of night hymn by alternate verses, saying the last one <coughs> together. Creator of the stars of night, thy people's everlasting light. O Jesus, you saviour of us all, regard thy servants when they call. Thou grieving at the bitter cry of all creation doomed to die has come to save a ruined race with healing gifts of <coughs> heavenly grace thou camest bridegroom of the bride as drew the world to evening tide proceeding from a virgin shrine the son of man yet lord divine and thy great name exalted now all knees must bend all hearts must bow and things in heaven and earth shall own that thou art Lord and King alone. To thee, O Holy One, we pray, our judge, in that tremendous day. Preserve us while we dwell below from every onslaught of the foe. All praise, eternal Son, to thee, whose advent sets thy people free, whom with the Father we adore, and Spirit blessed for evermore. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. So we turn back to the Psalter and we have three, two psalms this evening, Psalm 10 and Psalm 14. They both open and close with refrains, <coughs> which we will use, saying glory be before we repeat for the second time, use the prayers that follow in silence if we choose psalms 10 and 14 you lord have never those failed those who seek, seek you. you why stand so far off O lord why hide yourself in time of trouble the wicked in their pride persecute the poor let them be caught in the schemes they have devised the wicked <coughs> boast of their heart's desire the covetous curse and revile the Lord. The wicked in their arrogance say, God will not avenge it. In all their scheming, God counts for nothing. They are stubborn in all their ways, for your judgments are far above out of their sight. They scoff at all their adversaries. They say in their heart, I shall not be shaken. No harm shall ever happen to me. <clears throat> their mouth is full of cursing, <clears throat> deceit and fraud. Under their tongue lie mischief and wrong. They lurk in the outskirts and in the dark alleys they murder the innocent. Their eyes are ever watching 
for the helpless. They lie in wait like a lion in his den. <clears throat> they lie in wait to seize the poor. They seize the poor when they get them into their net. The innocent are broken and humbled before them. The helpless fall before their power. <clears throat> they say in their heart, God has forgotten. He hides his face away, he will never see it. Arise, O Lord God, and lift up your hand. Forget not the poor. Why should the wicked be scornful of God? Why should they say in their hearts, you will not avenge it? Surely you behold trouble and misery. You see it and take it into your own hand. The helpless commit themselves to you, for you are the helper of the orphan. Break the power of the wicked and the malicious. Search out their wickedness until you find none. The Lord shall <coughs> reign forever and ever. The nations shall perish from his land. You, Lord, will hear the desire of the poor. You will incline your ear to the fullness of their heart. To give justice to the orphan and oppressed, so that people are no longer driven in terror from the land. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. You, Lord, have never failed those who seek you. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of, of wisdom. wisdom. <clears throat> the fool has said in his heart, There is no God. Corrupt are they and abominable in their wickedness. There is no one that does good. The Lord has looked down from heaven upon <coughs> the children of earth to see if there is anyone who is wise and seeks after God. But everyone has turned back, all alike have become corrupt. There is none that does good, no, not one. <clears throat> they know knowledge, those evildoers, who eat up my people as if they ate bread, and do not call upon the Lord. There shall they be in great fear, for God is in the company of the righteous. Though they would confound the counsel of the poor, yet the Lord shall be their refuge. And that Israel's <clears throat> salvation would come out of Zion, when the Lord restores the fortunes of his people, then will Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So we turn back to evening prayer in Advent for the canticle, A Song of the Spirit. We will read it as we read the psalm. Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Behold, I am coming soon, says the Lord, and bringing my reward with me, to give to everyone according to their deeds. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who do God's commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and may enter into the city through the gates. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to you, with a testimony for the, all the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David. I am the bright morning star. Come, say the Spirit and the Bride. Come, let each here reply. Come forward, you who are thirsty. Let those who desire take the water of life as a gift. To the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honour and glory and might for ever and ever. Amen. Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. So to our first reading, chapter 31 of Isaiah. Chapter 31 of Isaiah. 
Alas, for those who go down to Egypt for help and who rely on horses, who trust in chariots because they are many, and a horseman because they are very strong. But do not look to the Holy One of Israel or consult the Lord. Yet he too is wise and brings disaster. He does not call back his words, but will rise against the house of evildoers and against the helpers of those who work iniquity. The Egyptians are human and not God. Their horses are flesh and not spirit. When the Lord searches out his hand, the helper will stumble <coughs> and the one helper will fall and they will all perish together. But thus the Lord said to me, as a lion or a young lion growls over its prey, and when a band of shepherds is called out against it, is it not terrified by their shouting or daunted by their noise? So the Lord of hosts will come down to fight upon Mount Zion and upon its hill. Like birds hovering overhead, so the Lord of hosts will protect Jerusalem. He will protect and deliver it. He will spare and rescue it. Then turn back to him whom you have deeply betrayed, O people of Israel. For on that day all of you shall throw away your idols of silver and idols of gold, which your hands have sinfully made for you. Then the Assyrians shall fall by the sword, not of mortals, and a sword, not of humans, shall not devour him. He shall free, flee from the sword, and his young men shall be put to forced labour. His rock shall pass away in terror, and his officers desert the standard in panic, says the Lord, whose fire is in Zion, and whose furnish, furnace is in Jerusalem. Thank you. So we're in an early part of Isaiah, I think I've said before, it's in three books, the first written by one person, the second, the second and third written by a group of people following in the Isaiah, first Isaiah's footsteps, and the first one is before exile and the second is during, the third is after. Um, and the first one is fairly typical of the major prophets. You've got the last bit you read, turn back to him who you betrayed. <laughs> So basically the last bit is saying, believe in God and he'll look after you. The line there, the Assyrians shall fall by the sword. So we assume that the Assyrians are surrounding Jerusalem or on their way. And God's people are fearful of them. So they've turned to Egypt for support and protection. And Egypt then as now is a local significant player. Um, Israel occupied Palestine today is arid. Egypt relies on the Nile, and so it's got that sort of strong base for food production, um, and therefore it had strong military, and local smaller nations and tribes used to go to Egypt, they just packed, you know, signed up, big power next door, we'll sign up to you so you can protect us, so that we can trade more readily with the rest of the world, as it were. Um, but Isaiah is saying to God's people, look to God, not to the Egyptians, and if you rely on me, I will protect you like birds hovering overhead, even when a young lion comes against you, a people like a young lion come against you. And the Assyrian will fall by the sword, says the Lord, whose fire is in Zion. Um, as it happens, they were taken into captivity by the um, Babylonians. I think they're the same as the Chaldeans or the Chaldeans. So the Assyrians, I don't know whether they're the same as the Assyrians, but at any rate, when this was written, this idea was be obedient. And so I guess all we can assume, having reading it as we are today, that they didn't heed that advice to be obedient. And so they fell. Our next reading is Matthew 15, 1 to 20. Matthew 15, 1 to 20. Then the Pharisees and the scribes came to Jesus from Jerusalem and said, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? For they do not wash their hands before they eat. He answered them, 
And why do you break the commandments of God for the sake of your tradition? For God said, Honour your father and mother, and whoever speaks evil of father or mother must surely die. But you say that whoever tells father or mother whatever support you might have had from me is given to God, then that person need not honour the father. So, for the sake of your tradition, you make void of the word of God. You hypocrites, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you when he said, This people honours me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. Then he called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth or defiles, that defiles a person, but is, it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees took offence when they heard what you said? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blinded guides of the blind, and if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, Explain this parable to us. Then he said, Are you also still without understanding? Do you not see whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of the heart comes evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, and slander. These are what defile a person, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Thank you. <coughs> So our two paragraphs open and close with um, the lines about uh, unwashed hands or washing hands. And that's a Hebrew thing that they do to enclose a story. So it's a bit like in the um, Goldilocks and Three Bears, you know, who's been eating my porridge. It kind of, we know where we are in the story because that comes up again and again. So our, what you have just read opens with the expression, do not wash their hands before they eat and close unwashed hands. And in between that, we've got two, two things. We've got the Pharisees and scribes who were devout Jews. Who, as a denomination, they grew um, after Jesus' death. So they weren't really around whilst he was alive. But they were around when the gospel would have been written. And they're accusing Jesus of not washing his hands. And that means like kosher. So he's not eating kosher food, basically, not preparing himself to eat as he should. And so they're using that as an accusation against him. We don't know whether it was true or not. But he then turns the question round and he says, well, you've got this thing where you're supposed to look after your parents, but you're saying if you give the money to God, to the temple, which I guess means it's still available to them, um, and you don't give it to your parents, you're actually not fulfilling God's law. So you're saying with your mouth, but you're not doing it. And because you're saying it with your mouth, but not doing it, it's, it's actually defiling you. It's what's in the heart that matters, not what you say. And so he turns that whole thing about not washing their hands before they eat round on them, if that makes sense. And uh, the disciples, just as we do, we don't understand what he's talking about. <laughs> so they ask him to explain. And it, effectively, he's saying it's what comes out of the heart that matters, not what you eat, whether you eat pure, impurely. It's not as important as your intentions. So, shall we turn back to evening prayer in Advent for our responsory? My soul is waiting for you, O Lord. In your word is my hope. My soul is waiting for you, O Lord. In your word is my hope. There is forgiveness with you, so that you shall be feared. In your word is my hope. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. My soul is waiting for you, O Lord. In your word is my hope. The Song of Mary. 
Lord Jesus, you are the one who is to come, the one whom we await with longing hearts. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him, from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones, and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel, to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, you are the one who is to come, the one whom we await with longing hearts. Let us pray. <clears throat> Father, Son, Spirit, three in one, one in three, we thank you for this past day and all that has been good in it. For our food, our company, for the things we have been able to do the conversations we have had, the things we have watched or done that have made us feel fully alive, loved, belonging, having a sense of belonging and of self-worth as we express our skills, talents and abilities to our own satisfaction and to the blessing of others. We thank you for these experiences of the day in which we can see you. And we also look back across the day and call to mind those things where we have turned our back on you, where we have not been aware of your presence, though you may well have been with us. Where we have done wrong, where others have done us wrong. Where things we had set out to do have not gone right. Where we have been hindered by technology or isolation in the things that we would have done today, or other people's diaries, where we have made mistakes. Our emotions with the emotions of others have got the better of us. And so we offer you these circumstances, praying for your forgiveness and your healing and your restoration. From Open Doors, we pray for workers in Central Asia holding Christmas outreach events and distributing gifts to children and their families. We pray that God will use these activities to reveal his love and to build his kingdom there. From Christian Aid. <coughs> We pray for a blessing on peacemakers such as Bishop Parid, or Paride, who is pictured in this prayer diary, who as part of the South Sudan Council of Churches has been calling for peace for years. We give thanks for his work and witness. The Diocese of Salisbury Cycle of Prayer has us pray for Weymouth and Portland Deanery. For Nick and Neil, their rural dean and lay chair. We pray your blessing on that level of organisation, the representatives from the parishes and the benefices within that deanery. And we pray that it will be a place where people can find encouragement and give encouragement, be inspired and share resource and skill that they may not have in their own parish or benefice. And that as they work together, that your church will be stronger. And returning to South Sudan and Sudan, the Episcopal churches therein, we pray for the Most Reverend Alapeo, who is Archbishop of the province of Eastern Bar el Ghazal. 
We pray for him as he supports clergy and their congregations in that troubled land. And we do pray for the establishment of a lasting and secure peace such that people can grow food, can trade, receive health care and education, gather together to worship and have a hope for a future in the land they would call theirs. And we pray your blessing on Gabriel Cottages, Garden, Close, Glebe, Way, Hardy's, Row, Highgate Lane, Knightonwood, Lewell, Lewell Way, Little Main, Loscombe Lane, Oakwood, Stafford Close and West Knighton in the village of West Knighton in our benefice. We pray for the businesses that are based in or that serve those addresses. They will thrive and prosper. Pray for the people who live in those addresses who know you, that they will be blessing to their neighbours and their communities. We pray that those that don't We'll find that this season, at least that Christian element of it, as we prepare to meet you, the baby, and meet you, our judge, may open their ears and eyes to the possibility of being more fully themselves, having a sense of belonging and purpose that might otherwise be denied them. We pray that your spirit will move them to take that risk and to find out more and to have a go at living that life, just as you drew those seers from the east when they saw signs and felt it as it were in their waters and made that journey and came to find you. We pray for Ben, Vicky, Carol, Brian, Steph, Peter, Seaton, Anne, John, Arlo, David, Guy, Jan, Charlotte, Mike, Elizabeth, Graham, Tony, Andrea. We pray for your sovereign grace to break through and to resolve these circumstances represented pray for wisdom and courage for these for whom we pray and for those that support them. We pray for all the resources that they may need, medicine, money, time, to give them the best possible outcome, short of your miraculous intervention. And we pray that a knowledge and an awareness and experience of your presence will give them faith, a faith to talk about, to encourage them and us as part of their community and support network. And finally, we thank you for what was good in the lives of Rose, Anthea, Esther, Sandy and John. Remember those we have known and seen no longer, all whose ears mind falls at this time, those who have served you here. We think also of those who have died suddenly and unprepared, in recent hours and days, through sickness, violence, neglect, accident, and those that have taken their own lives. We ask that according to your promises to humanity, you grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. And we pray for ourselves and all who mourn, that you will be for us the way, the truth, and the life, whether we've lost a loved one, and whether we face a change in circumstance. Let us set our emotions in tatters. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is governed and sanctified, hear our prayer which we offer for all your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry they may serve you in holiness and truth to the glory of your name, through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Awaiting his coming in glory as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. 
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the Lord, when he comes, find us watching and waiting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be 